Kilwat Dar Anjuman Solitude in the crowd This is the fifth kalma of the Sufis along the inward journey. Man as such as he is, he is a crowd within. He carries within him a great crowd. Crowd of thoughts, crowd of emotions and everything else. Khilwat means seclusion and Anjuman means crowd. Together these imply to be outwardly with people while remaining meditatively serene, tranquil, unwavering in all circumstances that life presents. We carry a big crowd within us wherever we go. This creates the burden of many types. Sufis say there are two types of seclusion. These are external seclusion and internal seclusion. You may sit down in your room all by yourself, but you can carry a great crowd of thoughts, emotions and people within you. The internal seclusion means there are no thoughts, emotions or anything. Even when we look at any object or anything, we are guided by this stampede of thoughts. You simply ask your wife to do something or your husband to do something or someone else to do something that this afternoon we have to go somewhere or someone as a guest is invited and for some reason or the other the person fails in doing so you start digging up the graves all those suppressed emotions feelings comes onto the surface I know I knew it from before that you will not be able to do things and you ne has never done anything in time or properly things like these happen what it means that you be in the world but do not let the world be within you you are amidst the crowd yet still you are maintaining your tranquil serene and meditative inner state external seclusion requires the seeker to seclude him in a solitary place that is empty of people is staying there by himself he introspects and thus meditates on the remembrance of God in order to reach a state in which the heavenly realm becomes manifest as Sufis say or what as Hindus say eternity manifests. When you change the external senses your internal senses will be free to reach the heavenly realm. This will bring you to the second category, the internal seclusion. This is what Hindus call as moving to the mountain or to an ashram or to a monastery to be among the like-minded. This can never bring you to the state of no mind or to a state when the mind is totally empty. The mind without thoughts or content. Remember all your thoughts are borrowed. Inward journey cannot begin until you attain to this inner state of emptiness. That there is no need to separate if you have learned the art of being with the people and yet still you are maintaining your inner serenity. It is something like this. You are honeymooning in a place, in a, a staying in a hotel. You do not want to come out of the room, but there are certain formalities for which you have to come out. For instance, you have to complete certain formalities to be in that particular 
place you are inside all of a sudden someone knocks at the door sir your suitcase someone comes so you again entertain that person come back inside again there is a knock sir this is a basket of fruits as complimentary for you next someone comes you attend to all these things and you are there with those people for as long as it is necessary as soon as the work is over you return to your work it used to be said about hazrat ubaidullah ahrar razi allah ta'ala he belonged to a kingly family his father was king when he wanted to go to his master he said since you have inclination towards that i will not stop you from going to follow that path but you remember you are my only son and when i need you have to come back to me he spent time with his sheikh and one day a message came that his father sent for him because it is his last time he told his sheikh that he do not want to go at this sheikh said now is the time that you are ready to take care of the kingdom be in the world but we do not let the world be within you he started managing the affairs of the royalty he used to remain he will go every day as a work to perform his kingly duties and after that he will retire into his solitary realm which did not have the kingly splendor but the abode of a dervish and he will live there he will take only that resources which were necessary for his dervish maintenance it happened one day some of his fellow disciples they were visiting the place because they inquired from the sheikh is there anyone who is in the world and yet is still totally detached from the world and its affairs he said if you ever get a chance to visit arar you go there and visit hazrat khwaja muhammad arar razi allah taala when these fellow disciples went to meet hazrat khwaja muhammad hazrat khwaja ubaidullah arar they had to pass through the place where the horses were tied and they observed that the pegs where the horses were to be tied were of gold and silver thought came to their mind how can he be detached from the world and its affairs when even the ordinary pegs which could have been of ordinary iron he has it of gold and silver after entering the palace he was given the royal welcome and then he met came in the company of hazrat khwaja ubaidullah while they were sitting in meditation hazrat realized that there is something blocking the flow of tawajjuh between them through his kash intuitive insights he realized that when they entered the palace what they saw that has been imprinted on his heart and creating the obstruction at this hazrat ubaidullah arad said look at the heart of this humble servant do you see the impression of those gold and silver pegs that you saw in this table on this heart of this humble servant this is khilbat the anjuman he is performing the role his apparent life is that of a king but deep within he is a dervish he has to maintain all that is kingly he cannot sit down in the garb of a dervish in the court room he must have the court portly splendor but all these things do not have any impression on his heart he is detached totally from the for instance i am doing for my living 
the distribution the east indian food items dry and frozen i deal with suppliers local distributors all the other supermarkets where i have to deal with all these people there is a showroom but that is a part of my living if i have to live in the world i have to continue to do the work there are people who have nothing and yet still they are aspiring for more a beggar has nothing he gets a 50 cent he is aspiring to get a next 50 cents to make up a dollar when he gets a dollar he is waiting to get 9 dollars to get a complete 10 dollar bill so on and so forth his desire of accumulation can with hazrat ubaidullah irad razi allah taala unu there is no need to accumulate but desire this comes from a different kind of satiation inward journey cannot begin until you attain to this state of inner state of emptiness this is called khilbat dar anjuman you are amidst the crowd but the crowd is not within you you are in a state of total seclusion i go now i have almost stopped whenever visiting the people unnecessary but whenever it was possible and it was needed i go i go to visit because i have been invited to attend to this function i make my attendance meet a few people here and there and if i have to stay stay by myself and come back internal seclusion means seclusion among people there in the heart of seeker must be present with his lord and absent from the creation while remaining physically present among them. in simple terms you are in the crowd but the crowd is not in you you are in the world but the world and its affairs are not within that is to say i state when you are in the world but the world is not within you let me explain this with an example your beloved has gone away every moment she reminds you of this separation her presence surrounds you each moment the separation is unbearable you have to wait until she returns her thoughts always remain with you and everything around reminds you of her presence you can be amidst the crowd but deep within you are with her anything you see it reminds you of her you see a restaurant it reminds you that two of you went to that place one day this is what is meant by dhikr zikr or remembrance it is said the seeker will be so deeply involved in the silent zikr in his heart that even if he enters a crowd of people he will not hear their voices the state of zikr overcomes him the manifestation of the divine presence is pulling him and making him unaware of all that is around this is the highest state of seclusion and is considered the true seclusion as mentioned in the holy quran men whom neither business nor profit distract from the recollection of allah subhanahu wa taala is the way of the nakshbandi order the primary seclusion of the sheikh's masters according to nakshbandi order is the internal seclusion they are with their lord and subsequently they are with people he may do anything and yet not a single breath will be free from the remembrance of the divine each moment he remains a witness but your outward eyes cannot envision this inner hell as the holy prophet rightly said i have two sides one faces my creator and the other faces the creation sheikh shabahaudin naqshban emphasized the goodness of gathering 
when he said our way is companionship and goodness is in the gathering. It is said that the believer who can mingle with the people and carry their difficulties is better than the believer who keeps away from people. It must be known that the seeker at the beginning might use the external seclusion to isolate himself from the people, worshipping, introspecting the words of the Sheikh or meditating until he reaches a higher state or awakening comes in. Of this he will be advised by the Sheikh. Sufi masters say, totality or oneness is not an exhibition of miraculous powers. Instead, to be among people, doing all that is necessary, sell and buy, marry and have children, and yet never leave the presence of Allah even for a moment. A constant remembrance. You are then in the world, but the world is not within you. Nanak says it is not important what you do. What is more important is how you do. With awareness even an insignificant act will become worship or prayer. Nanak never separated the inner and outer world. Kabir and Nanak continued to engage in the world of duality but, but everything reminded him of their beloved such is the way of Sufi masters. Kabir remained in this profession of weaving the cloth and all the woof and woof, the thread, everything was for him Ram. He said, I went to the market to sell Ram. I met Ram. I sold Ram to Ram. Every, in every seeker he was seeing that. Nana continued to remain in his profession. He used to go on the voyage, on the spiritual trips, and when he will return, he will pick up his plough and start ploughing his fields. He remained throughout the life of peasant. And in the last years of his life, he settled in a village that he called Kartarpur the village of the doer, Kartarpur, the village of the doer. Be in the world, but do not let the world be within you. This is Khilwat Dar Arjuman. The next Kalma is Yad Kard, essential remembrance.